A very good evening uh, to all the brothers and sisters in Christ. After many days, uh, we are gathered again to discuss uh, these wonderful words of life. And as you all know, when we visited uh, Nepal, we have studied about uh, uh, the concept of soul. What does the Bible say about soul? Whether the soul uh, uh, stays alive after death or uh, whether it dies. Can anybody tell me what happens to the soul after man dies? Anil Badar, Sunita Star. Joel Badar, Munna Sitar, Romi Star, Amar Badar. What happens to the soul? When a man dies, what happens to the soul? Okay, good. Okay, fine. Now, if the soul dies, the next question that naturally comes to our mind is that, uh, then uh, what is the meaning of hell in the Bible? So, if the soul dies, if there is nothing that is left over to go to hell, then what is this concept of hell? What does the Bible say about hell? So today, we're going to take a free tour to hell, go and visit hell and come and see what does the Bible say about hell. Generally, the idea about hell is that hell is a place of torment. It is a lake of fire where all the wicked are cast and where all the wicked are being tormented day and night without any relief. Even if they cry loudly, if they plead for mercy, you see forgiveness, there is no forgiveness at all. So hell is a place of torture. And it is not only a place of fire, there the worms die not, you see. And you see, and the fire doesn't quench there. So in hell, there are various degrees of, you see, uh, torture, uh, it is given for a man uh, depending upon the, you see, the sins which he has committed uh, while uh, living on this earth. So if a person uh, is uh, committed uh, sin, according to that uh, magnitude, uh, he will be given punishment. Uh, so some people will be, you see, deeply uh, put in uh, thawa for uh, deep boiling uh, and uh, some people uh, will be given hot hot, very very hot hot water bath uh, that uh, they may, you see, uh, scream a lot because of the fry. And uh, some people will be dipped into hot oil, you see, and uh, they will be roasted uh, as we roast uh, tandoor uh, and all. No? So, and uh, those people who are committed uh, sin with their eyes, uh, their eyes will be plucked out. Uh, and those people who are keep on telling lies, 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 lies. Their tongue shall be plucked out. And uh, those people who are uh, defamed others, uh, spoiled the name and backbitten and all, their skin uh, will be peeled and they will be, you see, uh, made to work a hard labor and there will be no relief and no rest at all will be given. So, so these are the general uh, uh, say concept of hell, uh, that it is a wicked place uh, where we poisonous snakes and uh, other uh, things will be there, very, very dangerous things will be there. So mankind, without any relief, uh, he will be continuously tormented by these demons. And uh, Jesus Christ uh, visits this hell oftenly, you see, and he keeps on visiting the hell uh, to just monitor what all things are happening, how things are going on. And uh, among that one, uh, you see, if a wicked person sees Jesus walking and uh, if he calls Jesus, Lord, have mercy on me. Please help me. Please help me out from this place. I am uh, being tormented. I can't suffer here. I can't be here. 
Jesus uh, mercilessly uh, tells him that, no, son, I can't uh, really forgive you now because uh, you had an uh, opportunity uh, where uh, you could have been forgiven. So you had a blessed time. So you did not use it. So now it's a time for you to suffering. So you can't uh, uh, join now. So you can't uh, again come back to me. You can't uh, have forgiveness. So that's the reply of Jesus. So Jesus, against his own character, without showing any mercy or any grace, just walks away, uh, allowing the sinner uh, uh, to suffer uh, in the hell. And who is the owner of this hell? If you see, it is the devil himself. And the Lord, uh, you see, uh, God himself has appointed uh, the devil to be, you see, the guardian of this hell. So... Uh, here the uh, duty of uh, Satan is to monitor the hell, appoint the demons every now and then to take care of all the dead souls, the wicked souls, you see. And uh, uh, it is the duty of uh, these devils to daily walk around, you see, uh, and to see where the dead souls are uh, have been sent uh, to hell, you see. And they generally think that the, the judgment will happen, the books of life will be opened, those who committed uh, sin, they will be sent to hell. And how will they will be sent to hell? So these devils, now you see these bad angels will come to the judgment place and take these souls uh, uh, to hell, uh, to torment them. And those who have done good, they will live in paradise uh, in a very, you see, uh, happy and a joyful manner. So, there is a general concept. So the wicked will go to hell and the righteous will go to heaven. And uh, not only that one, uh, it is a duty and the role of uh, Satan to daily give account of what all things are happening in hell. How many souls are coming? How many souls are being tormented? How many suffered? Uh, uh, what all? So tomorrow how many souls are being uh, reserved to be taken? So this is the general idea. Why? Why do we get the general idea? Because there is a few scripture in the book of Job that is uh, misunderstood this way. So let us read the scriptures. Job 1st chapter verse 6 and 7 brother. Job 1st chapter 6 and 7. Now there was a day when the sons, sons, sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence com comest thou? The, sa the Satan answered the Lord, and said, From the going to, and from in the earth, and from walking up and down it. Okay. They came when all the sons of God you see, came to present themselves uh, to give account to God for everything. And who also came with him, sir? Along with the holy angels, uh, Satan also came with him, sir. Oh, you, you're standing before God, giving all the details. Then God asked, oh, Satan, good, good. Brother's report, have you ever observed my uh, uh, servant uh, Job? Uh, from where you are coming? Have you observed him? He says, oh, I'm coming, Lord. I'm coming where? From where I'm coming? I'm going to and fro to the earth. Daily walking up and round, you see, and see which souls has to be tortured. So, which souls has to be taken to hell? I am monitoring the sun. He gives the reply. So, generally, they believe that uh, the Satan is uh, in front of God and uh, he is the one who takes uh, all the account of it uh, and hand over to God and God monitors all these things and all. So, it is the role of a devil to torment all the wicked. Uh. But if you see, uh, and think a little bit, who is the greatest of all the sinners? Uh? You see, is it the man who has sinned or is it the devil himself? Uh? If you see, it is the Satan himself who is the, you see, the worst of all the sinners. He is the main person and is the cause of sin. So actually, if you see, who should be tormented in this lake of fire in hell? It is the devil himself who has to be tormented along with the devils. Uh? But here we see that the devils and the Satan are tormenting mankind. Uh? So, why not they suffer in hell? And moreover, just think, you see, huh? for uh, a man who has lived for 100 years, so how many years of torment in hell? You see, huh? 
A lifelong torment in hell. What type of justice is it? Let, let us see and calculate uh, how much sin a man can do. Let us uh, take example and see if a man uh, is living for a hundred years. Okay. In hundred years, uh, in each day, the 24 hours. So in 24 hours, uh, eight hours, we generally sleep. So in eight hours, we work. We go to work. Uh, we labor other places for, to earn money. So 16 hours are gone. So balance is left over is only 8 hours. So let us consider if a man ever leaves, he continues to sin continuously every day for 8 hours. But actually this is more than exaggerate. Why? Because in these 8 hours we cook food, we take bath, we do other, other activities, we read, we pray, all these things. Are so keeping all these things aside, we taking into consideration that continuously eight hours it does only sin. Hmm? This means uh, a man's uh, thirty-four percent of life is uh, entirely committed for sin. Okay, now imagine, huh? Thirty-four percent of hundred years means what? Thirty-four years. Okay, if uh, thirty-four years he has sinned continuously, now what is the punishment that has to be given for a sinner? He should be only thirty-four years, not eternal, eternal torment. Not a torment forever and ever, ever and ever and ever and in hell. No, dear brother. How come is the justice? Where is the justice? If you sin for one year, one year should be a punishment. But how come? You see, this uh, punishment is forever and ever. What justice does it make, dear brother? Therefore, dear brother, so uh, Regarding hell, we need to, you see, think a lot and study a lot in the Bible. How can you punish a person who just to sin for 34 years, for lifelong, eternity to eternity, thousands, thousands of years, just to torment in hell? Huh? Dear brethren, just imagine, this is a picture of a Sabarmati Express in Godra that was, uh, you see, caught fire. So, all the people were roasted. You see, how much time it took, no? It took not more than 5 to 10 minutes for all the people to die. Imagine the fire caught in such a way that people were running up and down. You see? But none of them could escape the fire. The whole coach was red hot. If you go wherever you want, go upside on the usually sleeper, there the fire is there. If you come down, the fire is there. If you go to the toilet, uh, you just hide, try to hide in the toilet, uh, close the door, there the fire is there. Everything metal, everything is totally heated. Dear Budran, in just a few minutes, all the people were roasted. Dear Budran, by seeing this one, what comes to our mind? Do you ever feel happy that the mankind is uh, uh, put to fire? That uh, these are sinners, it's very good that they are not accept Christ. Uh, that is the reason they have suffered. Will you ever think this way? Imagine this is the photo of a, a school where uh, the children were, uh, you see, burnt alive. They were in the school having food. Suddenly the roof of the classroom fell. The entire school collapsed. They were sitting and having the food. There was a fire. All the children, small, small children, they were then six years, seven years, eight years, nine years, ten years, they were all burnt. Some children died there itself. Some children were burnt half. The cry, they were crying, could not be heard. The doctors could not control themselves. What anguish! You see, what uh, pain they are undergoing. They could not test their body. So much of pain, dear brethren. So much of pain. Why? Just because a fraction of a moment they spent in fire, brother. Imagine if this is the pain a person undergoes when he touches fire, what will be the condition if a person is tormented forever and ever and ever? Eternity, eternity, in fire, where the fire doesn't quench. 
Dear brethren, we know about Hitler. You see, last time when I came to Kathmandu, I showed the photos of Hitler's torture. We will see in coming days what all really happened. Hitler slaughtered 60 lakh Jews systematically, dear brethren. The world did not forgive Hitler. Even today, nobody likes to forgive Hitler. It was a great holocaust. You see, they were peeled to the skin, uh, allowed to suffer like anything. Even today, the world sees that one and they pity on the people who suffered this one. Dear brethren, so seeing all these things, what thought comes to our mind? Do you ever feel that this is good? That the wicked people are allowed to suffer? Saddam Hussein. He destroyed many villages in Iraq just because they did not obey him. Dear brethren, the, the atrocities which he poured upon the people, the way he tortured the people, you see, that is not uh, forgettable at all. You see, and what was the judgment that the court gave for Saddam Hussein? Hang him to death. Dear brethren, if that is the case, then how Jesus uh, doesn't have any feeling at all. When he goes to hell to see the sinners, if they are pleading for forgiveness, if they are pleading for mercy, for kindness, for grace, how come Jesus just walks away? If you see this way, when we compare, you see, our God to other gods, sometimes my question comes to, is our God like other gods? Is he like a devil? Is he like the other gods who torment people, who are happy by killing people, who are slaughtering the people, who are happy by tormenting the people? No, dear brethren. That is what, that is totally against then what the Bible speaks about the character of Jesus. Imagine if he, if a dog bites uh, our child in the family, a very, you see, it, it zips off uh, his leg, imagine, uh, just a portion of his leg. If a dog bites him very severely, what punishment will he give for the dog? Huh? We will nicely beat the dog. That's all. But would we drag the dog, dip him in hot water, roast it slowly, tie his hands and legs, put it under slow fire, peel his skin, pluck out his teeth, pluck out his eyes, chop off his uh, tongue, chop off his hands. No, dear brethren, we would ever dare to do it. Uh, then how God has created a hell, a place of torment for whole mankind. Imagine if somebody comes and spoils our computer, huh? will we hang him to death? You see, will we torment him until he gets our repair, computer repaired? Will we, you see, uh, pluck off his uh, fingers? Will we break his uh, fingers? Will he peel his skin and torment him heavily and torture him? No, dear brethren. Then what is the meaning of hell in the Bible? See, God has punished uh, so many wicked people in the Bible. Then how did God punish the wicked? So let us see Numbers 1633, brother. Numbers 1633. They and all that apparented to them went down alive into the pit, and the earth closed upon them, and they perished from among the congregation. See, here God punished the wicked people. He punished the wicked people in such a way that uh, they went down alive into the pit, and the earth closed, and they were perished. He did not say, dear brethren, that they were uh, tortured. The Bible says that the fire came down from heaven and consumed them. 
And not that uh, fire came down from heaven and her uh, burning slowly. They were tortured slowly. They were roasted slowly. No, we know the wonderful story about the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. What happened? Uh, there was a great, uh, you see, huh? fire from heaven. It came and uh, rained upon Sodom and Gomorrah within a few minutes. Uh, what happened? Uh, the wicked perished. Uh, they were never preserved uh, in this, uh, you see, eh? uh, fire. They were never roasted slowly, but they perished, dear brethren. Uh, so, then, once what happened? The disciples of Jesus were sent to a place to get some food. But uh, the villagers uh, did not give them food. They simply cast the disciples out of the place. And, uh, the disciples got very wild. Immediately they came to Jesus and said, Oh Lord, please give us the permission so that uh, we may command uh, fire to come from heaven and consume them. And what was the reply of Jesus? Jesus, did Jesus say, Oh, good, good, uh, good, uh, uh, Peter, good John, uh, very wonderful. You are really the apostles, uh, what I search for. This is what I'm going to do for all the people in hell. Please, please make the fire to come down right now and destroy all the people, all the wicked, right now in front of me. Did Jesus say? No. Then what did Jesus say? Let us read Luke 9, 54 and 55. Muna sister, can you read Luke 9, chapter 54 and 55? And when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, wilt thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them, even as Elijah did? But he turned and rebuked them and said, you, you you know that you know not what manner of spirit ye are of. Mm -hmm. Continue. Fifty six also. Mm -hmm. For the Son of Man is not come to destroy man's lives, but mm -hmm. to save them. Ah, you see, you don't know what manner of spirit you are of. This is not the spirit of God. This is not the Holy Spirit's thinking. This is not the reason which God sent his son. Son of man came to this earth not to destroy man's life. If uh, Jesus never came to destroy man's life, the sinner's life on this earth, then how will he make a place of torment for sinners to be tortured uh, in hell? A place which is next to heaven. Dear brethren, these and many more questions uh, Make us to think what hell really means in the Bible. The word hell actually in the Bible, in the virgin Bible, it means to hide, to cover. But today, unfortunately, what has happened, the meanings of so many words in English has changed. Like for example, what is this one? What is this one? What do you see on the screen? What is this one? Indoors. Indoors. Very good. Then what is this one? What is this, this one? This also windows. No, which is the window <laughs> we need to speak about? Microsoft. Windows. <laughs> Microsoft Windows. Oh, that is still window. <laughs> <laughs> so, the words meaning has changed here with Ryan. Now, what is this one? Mouse. House. What is this one? <laughs> Both are living. <laughs> so, see, the meanings have changed. Uh -huh. So, what is this one? Oh, yeah. no, medicine. 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 Which? What type of medicine? Injection? Syrup? Tablet. 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 Uh, 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 uh. Then, what is this one? It's also Tablet. <laughs> <laughs> so, which tablet do you want to take? So, see, the meaning has changed. Okay, dear brethren, today, you see, the meaning has changed. 
Similarly, the original meaning for the word hell in the Bible means to bury. In olden days, they used to use this term hell to bury. Like for example, if somebody has to sow a potato, they would actually tell, I must go and hell my potatoes. I must go and bury my potatoes. That was the term they was using. You see, there is a old definition, old dictionary. If you can come to my house, I am going to original 15th century dictionary. Original Bible or dictionary, you know. A 15th century dictionary which was published originally, not reprinted on old copy. Very, very old copy. If you come and see there, this is what uh, the definition for hell is given in that uh, dictionary. What do you, what is it given, brother? Can somebody read? What is it given? Hell means what? Please read. Can somebody read from the screen? You are able to see? Can somebody read? Gopal brother, can you read? Uh, hell to hide. Ah. Uh, he will construct contraction for his will. For he ah. will. You see? He will. Second one is he will. First one is hell. H-E-L-L. -L. Hell means what? To hide. That is the original meaning of the word hell in the Bible. Now, okay. Now, let us see and trace out how many times this word hell comes in the Bible actually. You see, the word hell actually comes in the Old Testament 31 times and in New Testament, it comes 23 times. And uh, there are four words that are used for uh, translating the word hell. In Old Testament, there is only one word that is used in Hebrew, that is Sheol, Strong's Concordance number H7585. And uh, there are three Greek words that are used in the New Testament. The first one is Hades, second one is Gehenna, third one is Tartaro. So what are these words? Uh, if you see, it's the Greek name, Hades, Gehenna and Tartaro. So, this word Sheol in the Old Testament, the Hebrew word, it actually comes 63 uh, times uh, in the Old Testament. You know, this Sheol and the New Testament Hades are both one and the same. If you read in that uh, ink box, the original Hebrew meaning of that word is given here. Can somebody read, brother? Can somebody read what you can see in the screen? In the box? Can, can you read? Anil, brother? Or Joel, brother? Here, you can see it in the box? From H7, 7592, heads are the world of the dead as if a subter subterranean retreat including its Accessories and an inmates grave hell pit ah, strong see grave hell pit strong Hebrew Greek dictionary this is not what we have copied you see this is prepared by whom by church fathers you see strong Hebrew Greek dictionary in the dictionary itself, you see, in the Hebrew dictionary itself, what is the meaning given? Is it given the place of torment? Show me one word, place of torment. It's given as grave, hell, pit. You see, that is actually the original meaning. You know, dear brethren, huh? this word is translated 31 times as grave. You know, the word hell is translated 31 times as grave in the Old Testament. Uh, you know how it is translated. Whenever the verse is speaking about good people, the word Sheol is translated as grave. But whenever he is speaking about bad people, that same word Sheol is uh, translated uh, as hell. Why they have done it? So that the people might think that hell is a place of torment. Okay, now let us see a few examples. Okay. Genesis 37 35, brother. Genesis 37 35, brother. Please, can somebody read from the Bible?
Una sister, you're there? Sister, can you read Genesis 37, 35? Is it possible? Yes, brother. Genesis 37, 35. Mm -hmm. And all his sons and all his daughters rose up to comfort, comfort him. And but he refused to be comforted, and he said, For I will go down into the grave unto my son mourning. Thus his father wept for him. Ah, I will go down unto the grave. You see, if you observe on the screen, next to that word grave, there is a letter put H7585. Can all see? Can everybody see this one, brother? H7585. Yes, brother. Yes. That is the Hebrew word reference number. And uh, in this box, the reference number is given clearly. You see? What is that word? That word is Sheol. From H7592, Hades, the world of the dead. That is grave, hell, pit. See, here it is actually speaking about Jacob. Jacob heard the news that uh, Joseph is died. So he could not control his emotions. He told, no, I'll grow down to the grave. I will go with my son to the grave. Now here, the word Sheol had to be actually translated as hell. But if you translate as hell, a question will come into everybody's mind. How come Jacob is trying to go to hell? Hell is a place of torment. Jacob is a faithful person. He is an ancient worthy. He is a faithful warrior. He was obedient to God. He was a child of God. So how can he go to hell? Therefore, in this place, they translated as grave instead of hell. Okay. Now let us see an example of wicked person. How the same word is translated as uh, uh, Hell for a wicked person. Psalms 9.17. Uh, Romy's sister, can you read? Psalms 9.17, sister. Okay. Um, Psalm 9.17. The wicked shall be turned into, the he turned into hell and all the nation that forget God. Very good. Sir. The wicked shall be turned into hell. All the nations that forget God. See, wicked. Where will they go? They will go to hell. Now, again, if you see here, uh, next to that word hell, what is the letter they have put? H7585. Now, what is H7585? It is the word sure. See, whenever it is speaking about the bad people, what they have put? Uh? They put as hell. Why not put as grave? They can put as grave, no? Why? They don't want to put a uh? Because wicked will go to hell now. That is they fix it in their mind now. That is the reason wherever the word uh, about the wicked people came to translated as hell. Let us see one more example. Job 17 chapter 13th verse. Mm. Uh, Surita, can you read? Job 17 chapter 13th verse. If I wait, the grave is mine house. I have made my made my bed in the darkness. Sixteen days I'll go down to the bars of the pit when our rest together is in the dust. Very good. See, here is speaking about Job. Job, Job is a good person. So again, if you see that Hebrew word is Sheol, H7585. How is it translated? They're translated as huh? pit, uh, grave. Why? They could have put a hell no, in this place. Huh? <laughs> if they put hell, everybody will question, no, how can Job go to hell? That is the reason they translated as, uh, you see, pit and grave. Why? Because it is speaking about good person. So let us see the summary now. See Genesis 37 chapter, Psalms 917, Job 17, 13 and 16. We see, we, we saw all these uh, three words. Okay. The root word, the Hebrew word for all the three cases is sure. 
And how they are translated? Whenever it speaks about the good person, they are translated as grave or pit. But whenever he is speaking about the bad person, they are put as hell. So, dear brethren, this clearly shows us the translation what they have done is incorrect. Actually, in all the places, let them put hell or let them put grave. They should put only either of the one word, not both the words. You see, so this clearly proves that hell is not a place of torment. And moreover, if you go and search in the entire Old Testament, there is not even one place where we can see that hell fire comes in the Bible. The word doesn't come in the Old Testament at all. It comes only 12 times even only in the New Testament. I'll show you why. I'll show you how. Okay. Now, hell. This is the actual hell. You see, the graveyard. That is what uh, is called as hell. Uh, huh? And uh, uh, what is the word, uh, Nepali word used for hell in the Bible, in your, your Nepal, brother? Now, what is the Nepali word for hell? Narga. Nargam. Okay, Nar good. Good. Now, what is the uh, Nepali word for, uh, uh, what do you say, grave? Jihan. Jihan. Pit? Jihan. Jihan. Okay, okay. pit, pit. For pit? Kaldo. 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 Uh -huh. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Is there any word by Pathalam? Pathal? Pathal, Pathal. Uh, is there that word? Yeah, yes, yes, but the Pathal, yes. Uh, that, uh, does it come in the Bible? Uh, yes. Okay. See, actually that word Pathal is also grave. You know, Pathal means what in your Nepali language? What does it mean? In Nepali, Patal means what? Oh, nobody knows. It's under the land or... Correct, sister. Under the yeah. earth. A place which is under our feet. You see? The bottom. Uh, under the earth. Correct. When somebody dies, where do we bury them? When somebody dies, we bury, no? Where do we bury? Do we bury it in a mountain or in the land? We, do we dig the land and do we bury or where do we bury? Yeah, land. land. You see? We dig the grave and bury it deep inside the earth. That is Pathalam. You see? That is the same word actually. Even in Canada also, in India also, that is a proper translation. Pathala. Patal means what? Pa means feet. Thal means what? Sthal. Sthal means what? Place. A place which is below our feet. Okay. Now let us come to the New Testament. In the New Testament, the word Hades comes 11 times. And the word Gehenna comes 12 times. And the word Tartar comes 1 times. These are only words where hell is coming in the Bible, in the New Testament. Okay? Now, first let us see this word Hades. This is very easy. Why not? The Old Testament uh, Sheol is a New Testament Hades. And uh, again, it is the same meaning. It is the same translation. So, the Sheol and Hades are one and the same. You can see the comments here, brother. We can see the comments for Sheol. Can somebody read what is mentioned uh, here, brother? G686. Can somebody read this one, brother? Okay, I'll read it. You see, it says Hades G86 uh, as a negative particle and G1492 properly unseen, that is Hades. You see, it is equivalent to Hades. Huh? The place of uh, departed souls or grave or hell. So, here again, huh? the word Hades means what? Hell. Now, let us see a few examples. Okay, the same definition. 
the old testament uh, shiol is new testament uh, edis for this one just one verse is sufficient for us which is the son read acts 2 27 mm. read acts 2 27 brother uh -huh. Uh, Anil brother, you are there. Can you read Acts two twenty seven? Twenty seven, brother. Correct. Because thou will not leave my soul in hell. Ah. Neither is... will. Read, read, neither, read, read. Neither, neither will thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Very good. See, this is speaking about Jesus, sir. Jesus' soul was not left in hell, Jim, sir. So. What does it mean? Did Jesus go to hell? Huh? Did Jesus go to place of torment? Huh? Now, this word hell, you can see here next to the word hell. You see, G eighty six is written. Correct, now, brother. Everybody, I hope uh, you are all able to see G eighty six. This is, ah, uh, huh? Hades. The root word is Hades. This was. is actually from the old testament let us read the same word in the old testament how does it come psalms 16:10 brother read brother psalms can anybody read psalms 16:10 for thou will not leave my soul in hell mm. neither will thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption very good brother Can you read in Nepali, brother? Let us see how does it come. Psalm sixteen ten. And in Navy, uh, Munna sister, you have the did you get the Navy Bible? Uh, Munna yeah, sister, uh, you you got it? Navy. Okay, brother. Okay, read, sister. Psalm sixteen ten. Because you will not uh, abandon me to the re realm of the dead, nor will you eat your faithful ones deeply. Hmm. What did it come, sir? No, you will not abandon me in the to the realm of the dead. Ah, realms of the dead. Ah, is it? Now read in Acts two twenty seven. Acts two twenty seven. NIV. Because you will not abandon me to the real realm of the dead, you hmm. will not let your holy one see decay. Okay, good. Okay, do you have Nepali? Can anybody read in Nepali? Acts two twenty seven and Psalm sixteen ten. All right, brother. Hmm. Psalm Psalm sixteen ten. You know, when it appears, the mere pran lay or the log match for no one is there. Not that appears, the Ahmo Pavitra John lay sword na dinu one is there. Other log. Hmm. Good. Okay. Acts Acts two twenty seven. पाताल Correct now, so that is a physically a proof. So that means the New Testament word "shul" is equal to the Old Testament "ed." Sir, okay. Now, uh, uh, let us read uh, Revelation one eighteen, brother. Revelation one eighteen. Can somebody read Revelation one eighteen? 
can I be? I am I am he that liveth and was dead and behold I am alive for evermore. Amen. I and have the keys of hell and of death. Very good. So here it says uh, Jesus is having the keys of hell and death. Okay. So here both the words are there. Hell and death both are there. Here again the same word uh, hell uh, translated is from uh, you see Hades. Uh, a place of death. And what is this meaning? Uh, Jesus is having a keys of hell uh, and death means uh, many people think that uh, Jesus is uh, literally having a door key. He will open and all the dead souls will be taken inside to hell to torment. No. Key always means to open something that is locked. So what is locked if you see two things. It says death and hell. Death means what? You see the last moment uh, what we uh, live our last breath. Is it death? That might be death in our sight. But as per the Bible, that is not death. Death in the Bible means uh, it is a process from birth to actual death. So daily dying slowly. Suffering, pain, sickness or all these things. This entire process is compared to death in the Bible. You see, when Jesus, Jesus said this one, Matthew 8, 22, huh? let the dead bury the dead. So, when Jesus is going to return at the second advent, he is going to stop this death process. The people won't die when Jesus returns and he starts ruling on this earth. Now, what is the meaning of uh, huh? hell? Hell means what? Uh? grave. When Jesus returns, all that are in the grave shall come forth. You see, that is the meaning of this verse. Okay. Now, uh, uh, let us read Revelation 20 verse 14. brother. Uh, Revelation 20 verse 14. Uh, Joel, brother, can you read? 2014. Hmm. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Hmm. Here it says the hell was cast into the lake of fire. But actually what is the meaning of hell? Generally people think that in hell there is a lake of fire. But here if you observe this verse, it says that hell itself was cast into the lake of fire. Did you observe? Hell itself was cast into the lake of fire, it seems. Read again, brother. Revelation 20, verse 14. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. Ah, That's hell it. itself was cast into the lake of fire, it seems. And what is the meaning of hell? In hell there is fire now. How can this hell well, cast in fire. And what is the meaning of hell? What is the meaning of this one? Continue that verse, brother. Where you stopped. Continue. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Ah, read verse 14 once more. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Ah, this is what, brother? Second death. This is second death. So, oh, lake of fire in the Bible means what? Lake of fire in the Bible is not hell. Because hell itself was cast into a lake of fire. So, lake of fire means the Bible's definition that this is the second death. So, what is the meaning of second death? We will see in the coming classes. Okay. Now, uh, let us come to our uh, second uh, Greek word. See, we finished the uh, Old Testament uh, one word, Edis, New Testament, uh, uh, Sheol, uh, we finished. Uh, now, we are coming to the, you see, uh, second uh, uh, Greek word, that is Gehenna. You see, the word Gehenna is translated as hell in the New Testament. The meaning of it is the valley of Hinnom. Now, first of all, let us understand what is this valley of Hinnom. Okay? Now, two uh, 
this word gehana comes actually 12 times in the bible okay in uh, new testament can you read the comments of uh, the gehana brother the hebrew uh, definition for gehana can somebody read from the screen brother can somebody read is it visible gehana of hebrew origin as 1516 and as 2011 belly of the son of hinom gehena or gehinom a valley of jerusalem used uh, figuratively as name of for the place or a state of everlasting punishment hell through ah. and greek dictionaries ah, what is it given it is the valley of son of hinom a valley of jerusalem you see the valley of jerusalem it seems now what is this valley of jerusalem chief is see jerusalem was a fortress city and outside this city was the valley of hinom now what is this valley of hinom why it is compared to gehenna see today we have uh, in our city all the garbage uh, is put outside the city correct now huh? so similarly outside jerusalem the people of israel used to offer sacrifices to god molek bal god what is given in the bible they used to offer the children as a living sacrifice you see alive they used to burn the children you see that uh, uh, bal god used to be like a, a very hollow uh, metal god made out of bronze and it has to be it used to be heated very you see severely and the children were uh, thrown alive into the fire so they thought that uh, this was a sacrifice was very pleasing to god so actually this is not pleasing to god this was a very abomination which god hated you see let us read this definition brother from the dictionary can somebody read brother ha huh? can somebody read from the screen anil brother okay brother gehena the valley of hinnom near jerusalem in which the israelites sacrifice their children to moloch and to which at a later time the the their refuse of the city was conveyed to be slowly burned hence hell al hib ke valley of and hinom mm. so the valley of hinom is what it is a place near jerusalem where the israelites used to sacrifice the children to molech and later when they turned to god you see they destroyed all this place but that place was never utilized for any other purpose so what did they do they used to throw all the garbage of the city now we you have we have garbage now so daily what happens we throw the garbage uh, somewhere outside huh so there in jerusalem they used to throw all the garbage in only in this place and that place was the valley of enom aha uh -huh. and it got command uh, that uh, people sacrifice their children to this molek let us see what the bible says jeremiah 7 chapter verse 30 and 31 jeremiah 7 chapter verse 30 and 31 uh, romi sister can you read okay i'll just it from the screen for mm. the children of the uh, judah have done a will in my sight say the say the lord they have they have said their uh, abdomen or abdominants in the house yes in the house which is called by by my name the what what was that word to pollute it pollute it and uh, they have built the high place of uh, top fit which is in the valley of the son of uh, you know mm. to burn their sons and their daughters in the fire which i commanded 
not commanded them not neither came came it into my heart ah you see the children of israel wicked people they used to sacrifice their children where upon the altar for uh, ball god did god like it god said i never told this one it never came into my heart see those children were wicked those parents were wicked they were offering their children to other gods in fire burning the children alive in the fire did god like it did god give this thought in his mind no if he never gave his heart if never such thought came to god's mind would you think that god would make a place of hell to torment the entire world no read one more verse jeremiah 19 chapter 5 to 6 jeremiah 19 chapter 5 to 6 uh anil budar can you read they have built also the high places of baal to burn their sons with fire burnt offering unto baal which i commanded not nor expect neither came into my mind therefore behold the days come said the lord that this place shall no more be called tophet tophet not the valley of the son of hinnom but the valley of slaughter ah they were offering their sons in fire which i never commanded never came the thought to my mind and therefore god said this place this place we were offering the children this shall be called as the valley of enorm a valley of garbage they put all the slaughter and uh, garbage the refuse of the city was put there therefore you know this is how the place of uh, a uh, garbage uh, looks uh, do you have it in nepal i don't know i have never seen that one but if in india if you come we have such places this is very far from the city where they take all the garbage of the entire city and dump it there and put it into fire you know if you go to that place uh, do you do you have such place in nepal brother actually i have heard but never been or seen um around here it must be like somewhere far ah somewhere far very good if you go to that place you know it will be so dirty that what will be there somewhere the fire will be burning in other places what will be there if you take out the garbage what will be inside the garbage ha huh? worms will be there it will be there or not yes well, yes worms will worms will be there or else if you see fire will be there fire or worms will definitely be there this is the same reference jesus gave jesus was actually mentioning that word gehana about the refuse place a dustbin read isaiah 6624 read isaiah 6624 brother and they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me for their womb shall not die neither shall their fire be quenched and they shall be an avoring unto all flesh mm. you see there is to people of israel is to throw all the garbage here you know what was other things that was thrown here the people who sin severely who committed very severe crime in israel after their death they were never allowed to bury in israel their dead bodies were thrown into this garbage and you know what would happen ha huh? the worms would slowly start eating that body how a fire would catch and it would burn the body so what will happen now the worms did not die until the body was destroyed neither did the fire quench until their body was destroyed so this is what actually jesus was giving reference this is actually the word gehana means in the bible therefore if you see the word gehana comes only 12 times in the bible you know the one more speciality 
all these 12 times except one time it's given only in the gospel and wherever this word Gehenna comes you see the word hellfire, hellfire, hellfire is mentioned only in the 12 places in the Bible this word hellfire comes nowhere in the Bible it comes why? because Jesus was actually giving a reference about Gehenna about this dustbin outside the city of Jerusalem okay now you can see on the screen the 12 verses are from the Matthew Gospel, Mark Gospel, Luke Gospel. So Matthew, Mark, Luke are all parallel. So we'll take only one book for consideration. One verse only comes in book of James. That one we'll see it later. Okay. Now why Jesus only mentioned this one as hellfire? Now let us read the context of it. See, for the Bible, Bible is a dictionary. We should not come to any one conclusion just by reading one verse. We should clearly understand what Jesus was trying to speak there. Okay. Now let us read Mark 9 chapter 43 to 48 brother. Can anybody read from the KJV Bible brother? Mark 9 43 to 48 brother. Hmm. Uh, Munna sister can you read? Uh, Joel brother can you read? And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off, it is better for thee enter into life men than having two hands to go to into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched, where there worm died, died not, the fire is not quenched, and if thy foot upon thee, cut it off, it is better for thee to enter, halt, into life than having to fit to be cast into hell into the fire that never shall be quenched where their worm died died not and the fire is not quenched and if thine eye often the flock it out it is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one ye eye than having two eyes to be cast into hellfire where their worm died not and the fire is not quenched for every one shall be salt with fire and every sacrifice shall be salted with salt salt is good okay thank you okay now if you see this verse it says hellfire hellfire if you see, this Greek uh, word is Gehenna. You can observe here, hell. Next to it, word hell. G1067 is uh, given. Now, G1067, we already seen, it's Gehenna. The Hebrew origin, uh, valley of son of Enom, Gehenna. A valley of Jerusalem used as a name for the place of everlasting punishment, hell. Where they should throw the dead bodies. Okay. What did Jesus say? If your hands sin, cut it off. You see? Huh? If your hands sin, what do you what do you should do? Huh? Cut it off. It is better for thee to enter life maimed than having two hands and go into hell fire where the fire quench not and the worms die not. Okay. And similarly, it tells for the uh, legs. And similarly, it is for the eyes. Now, let us see how does it work. What did Jesus say? If your hand sin, cut it off. Okay. Now, imagine we will sin from our right hand. We will cut it off. But what about the left hand? If we cut off our uh, right hand, will the left hand keep quiet? Will the left hand keep quiet? Eh? Few days will keep quiet. Again, what happened? Again, after the wound is healed. Again, that hand also will commit sin, no? What does Jesus say? Cut off both the hands. You see? Then, huh? if we cut off both the hands, what are we going to do? Okay. Now, did any of the apostles uh, sin with their hand? Just think. Apostle Peter. You know, when uh, all the soldiers came to arrest uh, Peter, sorry, Jesus, what did uh, Peter do? Immediately took the sword and cut off the ears of the soldier, Malkus. 
what did Jesus say? Huh? Jesus said to Peter, Peter, put the sword inside. Shall I not drink the cup which my father has poured into me? Now, what did Jesus say? What actually Jesus should have said? He should have told, no. Peter, what did I tell to you? If your hand sins, please cut it off. So immediately take your sword and cut off your hand. Did Jesus tell the same thing to Peter? No. Why? Because Jesus was not saying a literal meaning at all. Imagine if we cut our both hands, what can we do for the Lord? You see, next leg. If our leg sins, what did Jesus say? Cut off your leg. If we cut off one of the leg, will other leg keep quieter? If we cut off that leg also, then what will happen? Dear brethren, and Jesus said, if your eye sins, pluck it off. If one eye we pluck it off, what about the other eye? Will it keep quieter? That also will sin. Then if we pluck out both the eyes, both the hands, both the legs, what is left over? How can we serve the Lord? This is not a little statement at all, dear brethren. Jesus was trying to say, eyes means what? Legs means what? Hands means what? Hands means what? Hands means our close friends, relatives. You see, the flow, the very, very close brethren are there towards us. You see, who draws to sin. Jesus said, until you cut them off, it is very difficult for you to enter into the kingdom of heaven. If you want to enter the kingdom of heaven, cut them off totally. You see, huh? it is better that you go handicapped uh, than, uh, you see, with both hands. Uh, uh, some people are there now who are very right hand. If they are drawing us to sin, it is better that we cut it off. Dear brethren. And leg means what? Uh? Leg means uh, our walk of life. Uh, giving first importance to marriage, birthday, party, function. Uh, instead of Bible classes and all, that means what? Uh, we are walking that sinful way. And eyes means what? Eyes means the things which we see. You see, the television, the movies, the novels, uh, you see, always keep on watching uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, WhatsApp. Uh, you see, if these things are drawing us away from the Lord, it is better that we cut it off. That is what Jesus was trying to tell. Now, Jesus told one more thing that uh, the you see, what will happen? Their worms die not and uh, the fire doesn't quench. What is the meaning of this one? The words uh, die not and the fire doesn't quench. Okay. This is not uh, a literal, uh, you see, uh, fire that is burning forever and ever. You see, it's also told in Isaiah. Do you think that the fire is still uh, what mentioned in Isaiah? In Jerusalem, is it still burning even today? No, there is no such fire. There is no such worm who is immortal, who keeps on, uh, you see, staying alive forever and ever. It simply means that fire and that worm will be there until that uh, thing is totally consumed. So Jesus is saying, if you don't repent and turn to God, you will be totally destroyed. That is what Jesus was trying to say. You want to enter the kingdom of God? Then go to destruction. Then better cut off all these things or else it will be very difficult. That this is the meaning of the word Gehenna. Okay, only when the word Gehenna comes, the hell fire is there used in the Bible and nowhere else. Okay, now uh, some people think, brother, hell fire is there, no, brother? Huh? Fire, fire, uh, lake of fire. They relate to this fire to lake of fire. Now, just now we read what is the meaning of lake of fire in the Bible. Let us read once more. Revelation 21 8, brother. Huh? Revelation 21.8. What is the meaning of lake of fire? Read, brother. Huh? Hmm. Revelation 21.8. Anil, brother, can you read? But the faithful and unbelieving and the abomin ab abominable and murderers and warmongers and sorcerers yeah. Those sisters and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone which is the second death. Ah. Where, where, where will it burn? In the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. The lake of fire, what is the meaning of it? 
which is the second death. So lake of fire actually is a symbolic name given for second death. So what is second death? We're going to see in the coming lessons. Okay, but this is not a literal place of torment. Okay, now let us come to the last uh, Greek word that is uh, Tartaro. It comes only one time in the Bible and uh, that is used only for the reference for the angels, the fallen angels. So let us read that verse. Second Peter 2, 4, Buddha. Hmm. Second Peter 2, 4, Buddha. Huh? Una sister, can you read? Second Peter 2, 4. For if God is spared not the angels that sin, but cast them down to hell, and deliver them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. Very good, sir. So, here, you see, it says, they cast them down to hell. Here, the word hell is from the Greek word that is called as Tartaro. So, Tartaro means what? You see, Tartaro means a place where the angels are restricted. So this is only, you see, made reference to the angels, not for mankind. So this is not a place of torment, but we all know this is speaking about the fallen angels who committed sin in the first world. We have studied the subject of three worlds where uh, after uh, Lucifer, uh, you see, sinned and became Satan, God gave the angels in charge to, you see, protect mankind. And they were given the privilege to manifest and demanifest in the flesh. But once, uh, you see, they came in the flesh, uh, they began to have, uh, you see, relationship with uh, human beings and because of them, James were born. And God destroyed this first world, you see, by the flood. So, in the flood, what happened? All the people were infected with the blood of the angels and the James, they were all destroyed. But what happened to these angels, the fallen angels who sinned? You see, they were in the flesh when the flood came. But once the flood came, they changed to the angelic nature and escaped. Now, where did they escape? God did not take them to heaven, but they are bound in earth atmosphere. That is the, you see, place of restriction. That is the hell for them. Where, from where they can never come out only until God releases them in the coming days. Therefore, dear brethren, you see, this is what the Bible says about hell. So, what happens to the wicked? See, we read in Jeremiah 7 chapter that when the people of Israel, you see, offered their children uh, into fire, God uh, did not command it, neither did it come to his mind. If that only has not come to his mind, do you think that God has made a place of torment to torture all the wicked? No. God has no use of preserving the wicked. But what does the Bible say? Read Psalms 145.20. What will God do with the wicked? Psalms 145 20, brother. The Lord pre preserve, preserve all them that love him, but all the wicked will destroy. See, the he Lord preserved them that love him, but all the wicked he shall destroy. He shall destroy the wicked means he shall destroy. God doesn't have pleasure in preserving them and torturing them. There's no use. If there is no opportunity given for them to repent and turn to God. And what is the use of tormenting forever and ever? Read one more verse, Psalms 37, 9 and 10. Psalms 37, 9 and 10, brother. Hmm. Can you read, Joel, brother? For evil doors shall be cut off, but those shall wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit. He hath, he hath, for yet little while, and the wicked shall not be, yea, thou shalt uh, diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. Mm. You see, the evil shall be cut off. Not that they will be preserved and tormented. No. No. Where in the Bible it says, sir? It says, they shall be cut off, but they that wait upon the Lord shall inherit the earth. Yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. You can't see the wicked at all. Though you search diligently, you see, though you search it very carefully, you can't find him because they shall be destroyed. Read verse 20 also, brother. Yeah. 
seven twenty. Mm. But the week uh, shall perish, and the enemies of the Lord shall be as the fat of of lambs. They shall consume into smoke. Shall they consume away? Aha! You see, the wicked shall perish. They shall be perished, brother. That's all. Not that they should be preserved somewhere else. Therefore, dear brethren, this uh, hell doctrine that it is a place of torment for all the wicked is a very abomination doctrine which actually defames God's character. The God of the Bible is very loving. So, this is hell with hell. So, hell means what? In the Bible, if you see, it's a, you see, a place of the death. Death means what? Not that the dead souls will go there. It's just a grave. So, grave in the Bible is called as hell. Okay. Please kindly go through uh, this uh, YouTube uh, uh, class also and we'll be sending the PDF which is very, very important and more clearly given. And Brother Gopal and Brother Ashish will do the revisions in the coming Saturday. Please uh, go through it. Any doubts, any questions you ask, okay? please don't hesitate. You are free to discuss with us. Uh, we will... Uh, Definitely uh, clarify all your doubts. Sir. So, anybody, uh, if you have got any questions, uh, you can ask. Anybody, any questions, brother? Well, okay, Prashna, sir, Sister Romi, uh, Brother Amar. Sister Romi, Kaysa, Rajinina, Bhagavad Gita, Atavaya, Kaysa, Kura, Aspasta, 